so so tell, tell me this real, real quick yeah yeah lights camera action yeah right before they say action yeah what are you doing I'm ready to roll, man. Come on, man. <laughs> like, I mean, like, they put makeup on. It is a dime like, and yet another doing, wonderful day here on the shores of Northeast Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, go, go, hey, go, hey, do, do, do it real quick. Introduce yourself real it quick. It is a dime and yet another wonderful day here on the shores of Northeast Ohio. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on Fox 8 News in the morning. I'm Wayne Dawson. <laughs> there oh, you go, man. baby. Hey, hey, you the man, you the man, you the man. <laughs> Start from the bottom, gotta get up and go get it. Up and go get it. Set it up, level up, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. People need you, gotta go call now. Down. Making moves, we on the roll now. Look at everything we've been through, where we came to. It's amazing. Look how we made it. 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 People need you, gotta go now. Making moves, we on the road now. Look at everything we've been through, where we came to. It's amazing. Look how we made it. Zap. Royale. Back to another episode of Meet the Maker 216. I'm your host, the one you love the most, Webs. All right, so today, listen, we got a special guest on today. Needs no introduction, right? Got multiple Emmy Award winning, gives back to his community, you know, pastor, minister, you know, it, his church calls him Pastor or Reverend Wayne Dawson, you know. Cleveland, you guys call them Cleveland's own Fox 8. Huh, Wayne Dawson. You know, I'll call you Pops. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but how you doing though? I'm good. I'm 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 really good, man, and I'm I'm honored to be uh on on, on the show. Uh, oh, yeah. Meet the maker. I'm honored to be here, man. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I uh, know hey, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Just real quick before you start, I want to give a shout out to, to Hall Callers, the official sponsor of uh, Meet the Maker. You know, if you guys ever thought about, and I got to get you on a motorcycle too, you know. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you I, on there. Yeah, to ride. Right, 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 right. I mean, I'll ride with you. No, no, no I'm going to get you one to ride, you know, <laughs> on the side, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah. gotcha, but if you guys you. ever thought about having your motorcycles towed, you know, they'd be the guys that, to hit up, you know, if you think about going on vacation somewhere, you want to take a bike. Just make sure you hit them up. They also have a clothing line. You can see I have the uh, the buttons on here. You know, I got my buttons. Just a little representation of, of what they can do. But hit them up on Instagram at Hall Callers. They at Hall Callers. All right. So, man, like I said, good to see you, man. Good to see you as well, my friend. Good to see you, <laughs> son. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we start, though, I kind of like have like a little icebreaker. Okay. You know, um, let the people know who who I'm talking to. You know, so. Who is Wayne Dawson? Wow, uh, <laughs> let me see. Wayne Dawson is a guy who is uh, just working, man. I'm yeah. working like crazy. Oh, you know, yeah. I have uh, two full-time jobs. You know, I'm a, I'm a family man mm -hmm. and, and uh, just a, a guy that, you know, just is trying to live life yeah. to the fullest. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to just live life, man, give 110% in everything I do, yeah. you know, and just, uh, I guess first and foremost, I just want to, at this point in my life, I just want to be pleasing, mm -hmm. pleasing to God and, you know, an example to others, that type of thing, man. And uh, so that's that's what I'm about. That's yeah. who I am, man. Yeah. Just trying to be the best that I can be. Hey, as it went, I, I know you're busy. I witnessed that. I mean, <laughs> you stay busy, you know. That's good, though. That's, re yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm thinking like this, you know, I, if, if I was not busy, I'd be mm -hmm. wasting time. Right, right. You know, you know, I was a big time uh, PlayStation guy. Oh, you was? Yeah, oh my gosh, I, I was, and, and when I didn't have this job at the, uh -huh. at the church, I shouldn't call it a job, but this calling at the okay. church, but I was in the basement playing PlayStation all the time, you know, so I, you know, it's good that I have something to yeah. do, you know, besides uh, the Fox 8 job. I always thought that was for the kids, you know, for, for candy man, and all that. Oh, that was for you, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> I need to go out there and play you with Mad or something I'll like that. I'll be honest with you. Since I've taken this position, I haven't. It's been about two, four, almost four years since I played. Oh, really? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's been a long I was. Time, I mean, yeah. I would play seasons of Madden and and and, and NBA 2K uh-huh. and all that stuff, man. Baseball. Who was your favorite team to play with? Oh yeah, I always played with the Cavs. You played with the Cavs. Yeah, you know, back then the Cavs had LeBron, so that was, yeah, that was always good. Yeah. Then I would play with the Browns. Play with the, I played with the home team. Okay, play the home team. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So you got, you, like, what about your workout routines? I know you go to the gym yeah, a lot. Yeah, man, I've been working out for a long time. You know, that's kind of like my equalizer. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point, you know, in life, it's about just trying to stay healthy. Okay. So I just try to make it to the gym three mm-hmm. times a week, three, four times a week. If I don't make it to the gym, I feel like I'm off balance. Right. So what I do is I usually go there and I, you know, I always do stomach. Mm-hmm. You know, that's my pacer. I'll do stomach and then I'll do, you know, one day I'll do, you know, shoulders, one day mm-hmm. I'll do back, one day I'll do arms, one day I'll do chest. Okay always do cardio as well but it's just a way to uh, keep it moving man mm-hmm. you know when, when you know I, I, when you hit my age you got to keep it moving man <laughs> you know what I mean and you got to slow down that aging process and that's what I that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do I'm I'm, I'm uh, the Lord has blessed me with 66 yeah. years I just celebrated the birthday Whew. and hey, but, I, but I feel like related. but I feel like I'm 46 <laughs> <laughs> but <to> say that. <laughs> but you know, and I, and I think it's because you know I, I, I keep busy, I okay. work out, man, yeah. and all of that stuff, and that's very, very important yeah. too. Like I said, I, I've been working out forever. Mm-hmm. I guess I started when I was a teenager, mm-hmm. and I never really, really stopped. So you know, I think mm-hmm. that's helped me in a okay. way. Just helped me mentally and physically. Yeah, yeah. Well, you look good. You look Thank good. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. They yeah, told me no that problem. in the gym. Oh, they I know, yeah, they said, man, how old are you again? I said, man, I'm, you know, I'm 66. They're like, really? Right. Yeah. Well, you know what they say, man. Black right. don't crack. You know? <laughs> you better say that. You got that right. You got that right. <laughs> so, so, uh, so as a career, what made you get into broadcasting? And where did you get your first shot in this field? Man, I tell you, man, it, it, it's, you know, I've been in the business. I've been at eight for 40 years. 40, actually, 40, oh, yeah. about 41 years. And what happened was this, you know, at, at mm. Shaw, I graduated from Shaw High School. Okay. I didn't know what I wanted to do at that point. And uh, I knew I liked uh, sports, mm-hmm. but I wasn't good enough to play mm-hmm. in college or professionally. So I said, you know what, I like sports. Mm-hmm. I'll be a sports writer. So that's my first goal was to be a sports writer. So I went to Tri-C and, and I started writing for their, their newspaper covering basketball and track and baseball and all mm-hmm. of that. And then uh, I transferred to Kent and I, once again, I wanted to be a sports writer. So I went to the uh, journalism department and it was the, it was the winter quarter. And uh, I had my portfolio, all my articles and stuff. And I said, hey, you know, I'd like to be a sports reporter. They said, we don't have any openings. Something told me, why don't you go over to the music and speech building and try to be on, on the air? Why don't you try radio broadcasting? Right. I had never broadcast before <laughs> in my life. But some told me to do that. Maybe it was the Holy Spirit. So I went over there and met, bam, they said they had a position, you know, for right. me to do radio sports. So I did it. And, uh, and bam, that's why I developed my love for broadcasting. Mm. And as I kept on, you know, my, my major was, uh, at the point in time, was journalism. Then I, then I said, you know what, let me do uh, radio, TV, news. Okay. And that's what I focused in on. And that's how it became, you know, a career path for me. Okay. Now, I think... Weren't you on the radio or something like that at uh, at Kent, Kent also? Yeah. yeah, I was on the radio at Kent State University. Yeah, okay. I had a professional job. I used to cover uh, politics for the uh, local station in Kent, and I also did you know I did the TV station at on Kent State's campus as well. Okay. But I had a regular job for the city of Kent. Okay, for the you know covering okay. politics and stuff. But that was actually a pay a paying job. So yeah, that was that was a uh, so I got I got my start. Man, I, I, I'm telling you, man, it was a it was like the Lord just kind of opened doors for me, right? And, and it just happened like that. Yeah. I believe my career, I look back on my career now, man, it, 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 you know what they say, but God, mm-hmm. that's what it was for me, man, because yeah. I was one of those guys, can I be honest with you, I Go mean, ahead. first of all, I barely made it out of high school, I was one of them guys that, you know, I didn't, I didn't really try, I didn't give yeah. it my all. So mm-hmm. I had to go to night school and summer school to graduate on time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because I couldn't do the work, it's because I didn't feel like doing the work. Right, you know, right, I was busy right. doing other crazy stuff, you know. Teenage parent, you know, and and so and you know, hung around with the wrong kind of guys. Mm-hmm. But I had this one guy in my life named Cortez Brown, who was a basketball player for mm-hmm. Shaw. And he said, Man, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna make it to the NBA. And, and if you don't get yourself together, you're gonna be doing the same thing you're doing now, 10 years mm. from now, hanging out in the street and doing nothing. Mm. And, and, and to make a long story short, he went to Tri C, and that's why I went to Tri C. Mm. He, tra- he transferred to Kent, that's why I went to Kent. So he was kind of a guiding force in my life uh, at that particular time. God has always put people in my life to kind of guide me. 
and uh, and you know and they're, they're there for that moment and you know then they're gone but uh, but yeah 40 years man I've been at, at Fox 8 and uh, it's been nothing short of a blessing it really really has here's the crazy thing okay. I, I graduated from Kent in the winter of 1979 that next month I started at Fox 8 oh, as a trainee you know how, as a how trainee did that go about? At that particular time, they had a position for minorities, okay. a training position for minorities. And uh, I was able to get in, myself and this other girl, uh, we were able to get in. We were both at Kent State University. We were able to get in in this training program, man, and it developed into a job. I used to go out every weekend uh, and, and do, I used to go out every weekend with uh, other reporters and do stories. And my stuff was getting on the air. So I, gra I, I, I graduated from Kent in January. I was on the air. I'm sorry, in December, and I was on the air in January. Folks are probably like, whoa, yeah. you just graduated from school, what you doing on the air? <laughs> but that's just the way it worked, you yeah. know, it was this training program, this guy named yeah. Virgil Dominic, the news director, was the one who, uh, who allowed me to be part okay. of that program, and then the rest is history. Been at Channel 8 ever since then, mm. I knew where all the bones are buried, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But like, when you was talking about how you, you know how you came up through East Cleveland and everything, you know, that's, that's... That should be motivational, honestly. I mean, because you know they they dog you sleeping all the time. Like, yeah. I, I grew up here sleeping too. Did you? Yeah, yeah but yeah. it just yeah. goes to show you that it depends who you, who you surround yourself with, and if you really got the motivation to do something, you know, just put your heart to it and go after it. You, know? you do. You you got first of all, you gotta identify what you want to do. Right. That's the key. A lot of folks go through life and they don't know what they want to mm -hmm. do, man. But I was able to identify what I wanted to do yeah. early on, like twenty or something like nineteen twenty, mm -hmm. and I just focused on that, man. I used to visualize myself working in TV. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, it came to pass. Yeah. You know, now it, a lot of hard work, though. Mm -hmm. That's the key, man. A lot of hard work, man. Mm -hmm. It just didn't happen overnight. You know, it just a lot of hard work, yeah. man. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of studying. You know, I, I really <laughs> studied the industry and all of that, and studied other broadcasters, and and worked a lot of weekends and nights and all that stuff. You know, and and so you know, and now I'm enjoying the fruits at this point. So it's a beautiful thing. Okay. So just the last question before you transition into, you know, onto the business aspect. Yeah. So let's talk about your, the multiple Emmys and what, what suggestions do you have for someone who's just starting out? In the business and broadcasting, yeah, my, broadcast, my suggestion yeah. would be to, you know, once again, you got to be serious about it. Mm -hmm. You have to be focused. Uh, uh, you really, really do. You have to make it, uh, you know, the most important thing in your life. You really do. Uh, you really have to study the business, man. You, you got to look at individuals who you may admire. If you, if you want to be on the air, you need to look at broadcasters who you want to admire, who you admire. If you want to be a photographer, you, to, you need to look at photographers and, and you re look, at, look at stories and look at how things are presented on TV or whatever streaming device you're on and see how they, how they, how they do it, how they, how they put things together, how they shoot things, the angles and all of that. If, you, you know, if, you, if, if you're a writer, and that's what I pride myself in doing it's writing as well so if you're a writer you just have to you know you, you have to have a, a, a you know have to really read a lot of stuff and and, and you have to have a, a, a kind of a, a keen interest in the written word I always prided myself on being a good writer mm -hmm. uh, um, and early on and I think that's why I was able to really hang in the business mm -hmm. because when I first got in the business I wasn't anchoring I was reporting mm -hmm. so I used to go out every day and do stories and come back and write the stories and you know do the reports okay. and, and and to me that's the that's the uh, creative part of broadcasting. Now, now, real quick, so with that, so being an anchor and actually going out there, so when you're when you're out on the streets, you were actually writing your own. And Absolutely. So did, do they write it for you now? No. You well, right now, yeah, as an anchor. They, you know, the stories are already written. Okay. You know, I just come in and read. Okay. Being, anchoring is a performance, and that's basically yeah. it. I, I interview, I like, that's another part of it, interviewing. I love interviewing. But anchoring is a performance. When you're out in the street doing the story, you're actually working. You know, you're doing the interview. You know, you're, 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 you're with the photographer when he's taking the video and all of that stuff. Then you come back and you write the story. You pick out the different parts of the interview you want to use, and they call it a package. You put it together together as a story and you present it on the air and the key is you got to do this like in an hour or two that's you gotta, the key uh, so hold on so, so you get the information right right before you come in or say like for instance say for instance they send me out on a story at okay. four o'clock well the story airs at five i got to bust it now sometimes you have longer but oftentimes it's breaking news man you got to get out there you got to get because you got to think you got to get it together you know you got to know what you're going to do and and but but usually on a normal day, you go out, you get the story in the morning, 
you'll get the assignment, you'll go out with a photographer, you'll take the pictures, you'll do the interview, you come back, you write the story, you have a day to do it, you know. Uh, and so, that, so, so, so you do turn a story a day. On the weekends, you may have to turn two or three stories a day. Okay. But here's another thing, if you're doing a special though, okay. say for instance, you're a long story or a series, you may have two or three days or maybe longer to do it, but usually it's a day. That's, you know, it's a day or sometimes it's, it's a half a day or sometimes if it's breaking news, it's right there. Sometimes you got to get on the scene, assess the situation and bam, you're on the air. So that takes a really, you know, you got to be quick on your feet. So if you have, if you have like, a, and this is the last question, I don't mean to keep. That's so if you, if you have a special, you know, how long does the video have to be or like, you know, because that's two or three days you say. Oh yeah, if you, do a, if you do a special series, say in a series for TV, it's probably about five minutes. Okay. See, the average story for television is only about a minute, 32 minutes. If you do a series or a longer report, no longer than five or six minutes at the very longest, you know. And that, and that may take you a couple of days to do because you really want to think it out. You may want to add some special effects to it and right, stuff right, like that. Right. On a story that you're knocking out that day, you may not have time to do the special effects. Okay. But if you're doing a, a longer story or a series or a special, you can put the special effects in and all of that. Those are the type of stories that win awards. Those are the ones that win the Emmys. The Emmys that I won uh, are, are the ones that, that have been special reports or, 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 or half hour specials and stuff like that, where you have time to really, really think about it and, and put your best foot forward. Although there are Emmys for breaking news as, as it's called as well. So tell me, what was your most memorable interview that you had? My, yeah, the most yeah. memorable interview, is kind of interesting. I was able to interview George H.W. Bush and uh, he was the president of George W. Bush. Okay. I was covering, I've covered several conventions, political conventions, presidential conventions, and I was in Houston, and, uh, and for some reason, George W. Bush, who was behind in the polls, okay. said, okay, I'm gonna, interview, I'm gonna interview with some local TV stations. Okay. He picked us as one of them. So I'm there covering it for Fox 8 with a guy named Herb Thomas, my photographer. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, man, I'm, I'm interviewing the president one-on-one. -on -one. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there with him, talking to him. The most laid back guy I've ever interviewed. He's just a really laid back really? guy. Yeah, he was really, really cool. What really I remember is going through all these layers of security though. Yeah. You know, you had to go through all these layers of security because you're going to meet the president. Okay. So that was the most um, memorable interview I've ever done. George H.W. Yeah. Bush, only because he was the president of the United States right, at that right, time. Right. And he just made me feel real comfortable, man. As a matter of fact, that was interesting that, uh, that, that, that interview actually made the paper here in Cleveland. Not only did we do it on the air, yeah. but they were a like, local reporter, you know, interview. Right. Vice president, That's which huge. was good. Yeah, that was yeah. That, that was a, that was a, that was a highlight. It definitely was a highlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, I, I know. I, I, actually, I thought you were going to say LeBron. LeBron. Yeah, LeBron yeah. was good, man. I interviewed LeBron several times when he was in Cleveland the first right. time, and uh, I interviewed him when he was right out of you know mm -hmm. when he first signed with the Cavs, and mm -hmm. I interviewed him. I may have been one of the last few to interview him before he left, um, and he grew immensely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, but uh, that was a good interview as well. Mm -hmm. Very approachable young man, you know. I remember interviewing him at one of his camps down in Akron. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord said, hey, pray with this guy. And I prayed with him, yeah. yeah. But just a nice guy. LeBron was a very, very mm -hmm. nice guy. His mother is, is a wonderful woman. I'm, I'm very proud of him and what mm -hmm. he's done, man. He's really developed into a great, great basketball player mm -hmm. and a great statesman, a great spokesman for, you know, mm -hmm. for the African-American community. Yeah. So I'm Definitely. very, very proud of him, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So fast forward. So now we're talking about today, right? Because you're a pastor. I, I know how busy you are and everything. So, like, how did you get here? Like, what made you say, okay, I'm going to become a pastor now? Oh, that's an interesting story. Uh, you know, uh, years ago, uh, because I felt so blessed, you know, you know, from where I came from and, you know, how God had just kind of, you know, ordered my steps. Mm -hmm. And I was being asked, to, to be men's day speakers. They say, you work at Channel like, could you be our men's day speaker? I'm like, men's day speaker? <laughs> so because of that, I uh, said, you know what? I better, I better start learning a little bit about the word. Mm -hmm. So I started taking classes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some you know, seminary classes. And uh, mainly because I wanted to know what I was talking about when I, you know, first my, my, my men's day messages were political. Oh, really? But they became more biblical after I like, started. They were political, man. Oh, more. not really, but they were just political, more political. Oh, okay. But they, which is fine in, you know, churches, black churches, political. That's true. That's but, very uh, but, uh, <laughs> but I uh, asked, after I started taking classes, you know, I became about going more interested in the word. And 
And people start saying, hey, man, you know, why don't you be a minister? And this one guy said, come out to my church. I'll license you. But to make a long story short, I went back to my home church where uh, uh, Pastor Steve Rowan, you know, was my pastor. Okay. His dad was my pastor, too, and he took over for his dad. Anyway, I just started going there and he said, you know what, I'm going to put you in training to be a minister. Yeah. So I became a minister. And then after that, after a few more years, you know, he said, OK, now I'm going to you know, put you on the path to ordination. Yeah. So I became ordained at that point. No idea no desire to be a pastor. Yeah. I'm like, shoot, I'm fine, man, as, a, as your as his assistant, you know, associate pastor, preaching at various churches around town, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. You know, that was, you know, that was, a, I was preaching at all these churches, which is good, because it helps my position as far as Fox 8, because, yeah. hey, I'm Wayne Dawson from Fox 8, here on Sunday <laughs> morning, y'all watch me on TV. Right. So that was great. But you never know how God works, man. Yeah. What happened here was the pastor was a good friend of my pastor, Steve mm -hmm. Rowan. Well, he got sick. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he asked Steve, he said, I had preached here once before, when, you know, but he, and he wasn't here because he was sick. But he, yeah. he said, do you think Dawson would want to come over here to Grace to help me out? And he said, well, I'll ask him. So Steve asked me and I said, okay, well, you know, the day I was supposed to meet with him was the day he died, oh, really? the pastor of this church. Wow. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So they opened it up. They were looking for an interim pastor. Mm -hmm. So Steve said, if you're interested, put your application. I put my application in. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick me. They picked some other guy. Mm -hmm. Well, the other guy backed out. No, he did. That was the second <laughs> choice. So I came in and I said, okay, I'll be the interim for a year, you know. And one thing led to another, man, and uh, they offered me the job. So I'm getting ready to celebrate my third anniversary as pastor. I've been here four years, my third anniversary as pastor. So that's how it happened. But it was nothing that I really, really sought after because I, yeah, I had a career. Mm -hmm. I was just supplementing it, you know, by, right. by being obedient. Mm -hmm. But you know, but God gives you the strength. He gives you the strength, man. And, and, and I, as you, you're busy yourself. So you know what that's about. Right. But you know what, when you're busy, you don't even feel like you're that busy. You just, cause you, you just really do it, man. Yeah. You just roll, you just do what you do, yeah. you know. You just do what you do, you know, man. Like how, how you, you know, have enough time to do this, and, you know. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Something not gonna get the attention that it needs. Well, know, yeah, I, and, I'm t and that's my, and, that, and that's what you try, yeah. and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I don't want to focus on this so much. Mm -hmm. I neglect TV, mm -hmm. or focus on TV so much. I neglect this. It's a balancing yeah. act, man. Yeah. It is a balance here, act, which reminds me, I got to do a story next week. We do this thing called Voices of Unity uh -huh. at Fox 8. And I got to do this story uh, about this place on Larchmere. Mm -hmm. it's, it's called the Unibar. It's okay. a coffee shop. And it's a combination of blacks and whites and Asians. And they come together, you know, over coffee mm -hmm. in a spirit of unity. So I've been That's doing cool. these stories at Fox 8 for the last four, since, since the George Floyd situation. Right, right. Which, which means I got to shoot the story next week. <laughs> <laughs> and put it on the air. Fox 8 News in the morning, just right. in case y'all interested. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, we've been doing it since uh, since George Floyd, and I, I don't do it myself. All the uh, there are other reporters who help me out. I front them, but just like this week, we did a story. Jasmine Bailey, our new reporter, on the weekend mornings did it. Uh, Lord, uh, 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 Alex Stokes does stories. Uh, you know, Roosevelt Leftwich has done some stories. Uh, you know. Uh, Adrian De Piazza has done some stories, but they're all under the banner of Voices of Unity. Uh, it is, it's Fox 8's way of saying, okay, there's a lot of visitors in the world, but how can we talk about unity, bringing people together? And so they've allowed me, you know, to be able to front them. So that's a beautiful thing. That's cool. Yeah. So, all right, so like, there are so many subjects to speak on, like when it comes to life. Um, like, how do you come up with your sermons and? What influenced you? I'm all over the place, man. You know, <laughs> I really do. It just depends on stuff that I read throughout the uh -huh. week, you know, stuff I see online, you know. Um, some uh, The easiest way to do sermons is to do series, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I did a series recently on lukewarm Christianity. Mm -hmm. So that was a three-part series, you know, individuals mm -hmm. who are in the faith, but they're yeah. not really in the fath they They're kind of straddling the fence. Anyway. But <laughs> I'm on it. I know, like man. I probably hit play on. I want to turn that one off yeah. real quick. But but you know, it just just depends, man. On you know, but like it just you know, it's just life. Usually, you know, just life. And right now, I'm working on a piece. Uh, it's called "Are You on the Right Train?" 
the right train to glory. You know, do you have your ticket for the right train? Come on, you, are you about to start preaching? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talk about great Sabbath. Whatever, whatever you want to talk about. We'll talk about the building. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can, we can take a virtual tour through the building. All right. You know, so so I'm, I'm pretty proud of, of some of the things that we've done here. When I first got here, we didn't have a media ministry per se. So now in the sanctuary, we have a media ministry and that allows us to stream each and every Sunday. We do it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, uh, and the Grace Tabernacle fa uh, Facebook page. So we're streaming every Sunday morning and that really helped us during the pandemic because when we were closed, we were able to stream and, and we didn't miss a beat. So that was a blessing. So I'm happy with our media ministry. We got the big TV screens up and everything like that we have the, the camera and all of that we don't have the camera as good as yours that you oh, no, use no, 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 but we, no. we we got the cameras up and all that so we're able to stream and that's a blessing uh, we're also done some improvements as well we have the JB Price Hall you know that's named after the founder of the church uh, Dr. Uh, Jeremiah Price uh, and his wonderful wife Juliet now that's one of our halls in the back we have the East uh, Bible study room where we just redone we put some a new flooring down and we took up the old carpet put some new flooring down they got a big screen TV there we, we this week I think we're getting some some window treatments there as well so that's an all-purpose room that we use. Very, very happy about what we've done to what I call the youth wing in the basement. We have a teen room, man, and I love the teen room. You know, they got all kind of games in there and stuff like that. You know, we got the hockey game, you know, we got the foosball game, we got the big screen TV and all of that. And it's set up where kids can learn about the Lord in their own way and feel comfortable yeah, about it. Back, That's yeah. the teen room, yeah. feel, feel comfortable. Yeah, what we do when, when church starts up, when kids get back in church, they, they'll meet in that teen room, right? Right, right at when they get to church. They only have to come up to the sanctuary. They can go down there and have their own service. They'll have a little 10, 15 minute uh, mini sermon. And then they'll break off into the classrooms. And then we have another classroom for the uh, toddlers, you know, for the toddlers. And once again, everything's TV based because we, we believe in using YouTube and all of that. YouTube is a wonderful source for Christian stuff. It really, really is. You get all kind of stuff on YouTube. And then we have the we have the place for the actual babies, the nursery as well. And so I'm proud of that. We got the nursery ready for the young, for the young uh, babies babies and stuff. Then we had the middle school room. The middle school is across the hall and that's for the, you know, the kids, uh, I think the preteens, if you will, the middle school teens, middle school uh, uh, st uh, youngsters. And then finally, last but not least, just downstairs, we have a conference room. That room was just a storage area. We totally redid it, put the conference room in there now, and so we can have meetings there. We have a lot of ministries here. We can have ministry meetings there and all that stuff. And right once the church really opens back up, we, that's going to be. We, we started using it before the pandemic, but once the pandemic is gone, we'll be back in there again, having small group meetings and stuff like that. So we're very, very proud of what we've done down there. So God has blessed us, man. It's amazing how God, during the pandemic, God has blessed us to be able to do some things. You know, do some stuff outside the church. You know, do some stuff in the back. Do some stuff for the front keep the building up and all of that so god has blessed us during these turbulent times now are you guys still doing the like um, it's not called harvest for hunger yes but, uh, yes we do the food bank as a matter of fact we're getting to start up again this is our third year doing the produce on on the second saturday of every month during the summertime we do it for seven months uh, we also gave away turkeys this year. You know, we gave away about 250, 250 turkeys to families here in Northeast Ohio. We do that every year as well. So, and then, and, and, you know, we did the Easter thing this year, giving out Easter bunnies to the, not Easter bunnies, Easter candy, Easter baskets to, to kids in the neighborhood and all of that. So we try to reach out beyond the, the walls of Grace Tribe and I go back to church to be a blessing to the community. So that's a good thing as well. It definitely is. Uh, what about, so your service times? Service programs, times? Okay, yeah. we start at, ordinarily we start at 1045, okay. but during this particular time, we're starting at 11. Uh, uh, but that's just temporarily. We start at 1045, but right now during the pandemic, we've just opened up our doors and starting at 11 to get the people who are doing Sunday school virtually through the prayer line time to get to church. But ordinarily 1045 is when we start, you know, church. Sunday school's at 9.30. We have a Bible study at 6.30 on Wednesday. Right now it's on the prayer line. And then uh, we have prayer service we do on the prayer line on Thursday at uh, 9.30 in the morning. So we do all that kind of stuff. And then we have, you know, ministry meetings throughout the week. So it's a busy church. A lot going on. Yeah, definitely. It sounds like it is. 
Where are you located? We're located at 5020 uh, Mayfield Road in Lyndhurst, Ohio, uh, right uh, not too far, just a little bit west of the intersection of Mayfield and Richmond Road. So yeah, it's a good location. It's, a, it's an easy location. And, and you know, so it's, uh, yeah, come one, come all, man. Yeah. We're, we're looking for new yeah. members. So, you know, yeah. come one, come all. Well, like I said, we, we, uh, we try to have a good time. Yeah, I try to keep the services short. Uh, our, my, my goal is an hour and 15 minutes because we're doing it, we were just doing it online. It was an hour. But you got to stretch it out just a little bit to get stuff in. Yeah. Uh, the first Sunday was this past Sunday. I went a little long, but it was communion Sunday. <laughs> but I'm trying to cut my sermons down yeah. and cut the singing down. Do about an hour and 15 minutes. Get you in and get you out. You know, I understand <laughs> nobody wants to be in church all day. Back in the old days, you was in church all day. Man, then, then you had to go back in the afternoon. And sometimes you had to go back at night, right? Yeah, that's true. I remember my grandma used to have... I didn't know it's so many different styles of peppermints. Like she used to hand me the watermelon size peppermint. Like well, shut up. And then if I cry, she she do that little pinch, that little pinch. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't beat the kids in church. You know you got you got shut up. Let me tell you my philosophy, man. My philosophy, and, and it's interesting too. My my philosophy as far as the ministry is concerned, first of all, is that we as as Christians are trying to be like Christ. That's my that's my philosophy. We want to be like Jesus. And then we want to we want to understand who we are and whose we are. Yeah. And I always tell people that their greatness is within us because it's, because the Holy Spirit is within us. And when you think about the fact that the part of the Godhead is within you right. to lead you and guide you and to be your comforter and your counselor and all of that, that's a beautiful thing, man. And if you depend on that Holy Spirit to lead you, man, it's amazing what God will do. And he'll He'll make you more than a conqueror. You know, He'll take a person who who is the least among us and make him one of the best among us. Because, like I said, I'm just a guy, man. I'm just a guy from East Cleveland, man. And and and, and God has blessed me, man. And I wasn't at Shaw, man. I, like I said, I, was, I probably was nobody even knew who I was at Shaw. I was that kind of guy. Oh, really? I was the kind of guy that you know you cut school and all that old kind of crazy stuff, man. I was definitely on the wrong track. But I think God always had a call on my life, but I was on the wrong track big time, man. Big time. <laughs> like I said, my thing is if, if I can do what I do and you know achieve my dreams, my thing is there's no reason anybody else can because I'm no better than anybody else. You know, I, I just I just got focused and worked hard. That's the key. The key is working. Most cats don't want to work hard, man. They want to glide through the thing. They want to easy, as you used to say, easy money. Right. But it ain't no such thing as easy money, man. You know, I mean, unless you're doing it illegally, you got to work, man, for your stuff. So before we take the shot, I don't know what you got. I, I got, I got wheatgrass. I got, I got. I don't know. This is this is not. This is the the juicery beyond the juicery. Yeah, yeah. Beyond, it's right there on uh on Wilson Turbo. Mills. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right there on Wilson Mills. Right by, oh, right by yeah. that Chipotle. Yeah, I've been Beyond there. Duke. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. That's your favorite place now. Huh? I love, I love that spot. Hey, listen, one day they're gonna be the sponsor too. You know, they're gonna, you know. Well, if you keep doing this stuff, <laughs> and so this, so this is not wheatgrass. Mine's wheatgrass. Okay. Yours is, uh, it's grapefruit, it's lemon, like turmeric, that. and yeah. honey. Yeah. Long as it don't keep me up tonight. No, it's not gonna keep you up. You know, because you know, don't sleep is important to me. I get up at two in the morning. You didn't talk about that. Oh man! The fact I get up at two in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that's ungodly, man. It's, it's, that's that's crazy. So what time do you go to sleep? I try to go to bed by about seven, seven thirty. Get up at two. That that alarm rings at two every morning. Ooh. So I got to get up. So I'm usually at work by. Uh, I get to work by three thirty. Okay. We're on the air at four, and we go from four till nine. I'm on till nine fifteen. Unless Todd is off that day, then I got to go all the way to 10. Dang. So that's a long time on the air, man. So so tell, tell me this real, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Lights, camera, action. Yeah. Right before they say action. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm ready to roll, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, I mean, like, they put makeup on. It is the dive like, of yet another doing? wonderful doing? day here on the shores of Northeast Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, go, go ahead. Hey, go, hey do, do, do it real quick. Introduce yourself real it quick. It is the dive of yet another wonderful day here on the shores of Northeast Ohio. Thank you for joining us here on Fox 8 News in the morning. I'm Wayne Dawson. <laughs> There oh, you go, man. baby. Hey, hey you the man. You the man. You the man. So let's uh, let's let's toast to okay. You know, uh, success. You know, yeah. and and where you at, man? You know, yeah. and we toast you know, to God your success, good. man. Oh, oh, man. You know, yeah, it, I, I'm. We toasting to your success, oh, well, I appreciate man. you. Appreciate you. Keep it going, yeah, brother. You gonna shoot it all the way down? I don't know about all that. Man. Come on. <laughs> I ain't looking. I ain't as young as you, man. I ain't as big as you either. So come on. Hmm. You knock that down, man. Oh yeah. It wasn't that bad for real. He makes me feel inferior. <laughs>
<laughs> Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. <laughs> I feel like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pledging. <laughs> Chug, Chug, Chug. Right, Chug. right, right. <laughs> Five minutes, sit me, y'all. Well, anyway, hey. uh, go ahead. Yeah. Is that uh, it? Oh, that, was, that was it, man. Do you have anything else you want to say to the audience before we leave? <laughs> well, thank you uh, for watching Fox 8. I hope you watch Fox 8. And for the support, man, over all these years. Continue to watch us, man. Uh, I'm on in the morning from uh, 4 until 9, mm. five days a week. So, hey, keep on doing it. Keep on watching. And good luck to you, bros and sisters. Be the best that you can be. Be all that you can be. And as I tell everybody, man, the seeds of greatness are within you. That's the key right there. Yeah. Know who you are and whose you are. And understand that you and God, as I say, mm -hmm. unbeatable combination. Yes. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you being on the show. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Really good appreciate having it. you. Appreciate it. You know, hey, thank you guys for tuning in, watching another episode of Meet the Maker. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe. Make sure you follow. Make sure you share it. Do whatever. Get the word out. You know what I'm saying? That it's a, it's a good show out here putting other people on, man. And good thing. Good thing. You're the man. Yeah. I love them aqua clothes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep that on there, too. <laughs> <laughs>